If you've been paying attention, I don't know why this shot here is showing my green screen, but you guys will have to live with it. I don't want to fiddle around with it. Anyway, uh, if you've been around AYP, you know advancing your photography comes down to, or photography comes down to five distinct parts. Visualization is at the heart of it. By the way, I want to clear up if anybody has this misconception. Let's just knock it out right now. The visualization only applies to certain types of photography, like landscape photography, for instance. BS. It all starts with your vision. It's all guided by your vision. It's all guided by your vision. What you form in your mind comes before you even pick up a camera. Now, let's argue. Mark, but what about if I'm going out and I'm being a street photographer shooting like Henry Cartier-Bresson? Surely he didn't stop and visualize every photograph. You know what? Just the fact that you're going out and shooting on a street, you're carrying a certain camera, and you are deciding you want to come away with some photographs. Right there is your, vis your visualization. Why did you pick that spot? Why? Why did you pick that genre? Why are you even interested in visuals or in street photography? Because you had a vision behind all that. Do not lose sight of this. This is very, very, very important. And visualization does carry on through the whole process. Cartier-Bresson, you know, we have this incredible video from Dotan Sagai of, of Cartier-Bresson's famous photograph of the man jumping over the mud puddle. He could not see because the camera had to go be poked through the fence. He actually couldn't see the man doing that jump, but he was able to visualize and he pressed the shutter at the right moment. And if he hadn't been able to visualize, he would not have gotten that image. Okay. I'm not going to belabor this point, but I do want to remind you that it is the heart and soul of what we're doing here as creatives. Then the next thing from visualization, of course, is knowing your equipment, which is a tool for creativity. That's how we look at cameras. That's how we look at lights. That's how we look at lenses. They're tools for creativity. Then you capture, which is your lighting and composition. You process. And then finally, you share it with the world. That's what makes a complete cycle of photography. And you as a photographer are going to be really as rewarded as you do all five of those things. If you stop, for instance, and you don't share, you're never going to feel complete. You're not going to have the reward of putting your work out to someone else. And I don't care if it's an ornament like I just went over. Somebody's going to look at that and go, well, that's really cool. Thank you. Or it's a book or it's an exhibit. There's a lot of ways you can share. But the important thing is you, you do complete that full cycle of photography. And that's all driven by your vision. What book you want to design or the fact that you want to put it in a book. That's your vision, right? That's how it got there. Okay, I'll argue with anybody day and night if there's anybody who does not believe that every step of photography is driven by visualization. Speak up now or forever hold your peace. Give me any exception you can think of. Well, Mark, what about, you know, that accidental photograph? I didn't even think about it until, you know, I pressed the shutter just accidentally. Okay. You still had to put yourself there. You still had to visualize yourself as a photographer. Okay. Challenge me. <laughs> We're hitting the basics. The basics are those things that you build a foundation with. You cannot build a house without a foundation. I don't care if it's a dirt floor like the houses that I stayed in the casa, casas that I was in in Mexico. They had a dirt floor that was pounded, you know, trampled down. That was still a foundation. And you can't build, you can't put walls up without a foundation. So we're building your foundation and we're making it strong, fundamental, forming a necessary base or core the cent of central importance. I don't want to deal with the side light things. I want to deal with the things that really hold up that will be as true 10 years from now as they are, as they were 50 years ago. When I use these cameras, I started using those cameras 50 years ago and they still hold true. Okay, 
There's some areas of interest that I found in surveying. Maybe some of you guys took part in these surveys. Um, developing visualization, good thing. <laughs> if you don't like visual the concept of visualization, this is not your channel. Go look at something else because I'm going to be talking about it a lot and I'm going to talk about it constantly. And you might think I'm being overly repetitious, but I'm not because it is something we all have to embrace and look at different ramifications of. So developing your visualization is a really important skill. Personal enrichment and amusement. This is what somebody expressed about wanting to get out of photography. It enhances your senses and gets you more involved with life. So true. So true. I mean, the difference for me between just being a tourist and randomly taking snapshots and really being, putting my photographer hat on, really going out with the intention of telling a story about that trip, let's say. Big difference, because now I'm really involved. Now I'm really seeing stuff. And I am seeing things more clearly and more brightly and more in depth than I would if I'm just doing snap, snap, snap. That's just sur surface, okay? You wanna, guide, you wanna get into life? Get into life. <laughs> And that's what I love about photography. It's a way to be involved with life. It has a lot more meaning than just pressing a shutter. Being creative. Well, there's that creative process that's in my book, Create. If you haven't got it, you should get a copy of it. Because at the end of the day, photography is a creative outlet. And if you're going to be a photographer, you're probably going to find yourself doing more than one aspect of creativity. You're going to write. You're maybe going to put your stuff in film form. That's another, you know, aspect of creativity right there. You might find yourself doing talks about your work. That's another creative outlet. So I like to see you develop not just as a photographer, but multidimensionally as a creative person. And then, of course, sharing to the world. We're not even going to talk about that anymore because you've already heard me mention that. Some of the challenges that were brought up were getting inspired or motivation. I'm going to cover that. That's really important. I get uninspired. I, I lack motivation. And, you know, I get into a little plateau there. And you, ha you, have, to, you have to find the thing that's going to spark you out of that. The best thing I know is to look at others' work, whether it's a film, a book. You know, we were having this discussion. You can go to a library if your library is open. Go look at the, look at the books on the wall. Uh, it's a you might find rows and rows and rows of photography books. You can pull them out right there and look at them in the library or check them out. But it's going to broaden your experience. And of course, going to museums, not being focused. It's really important to find a project and be focused on it. And that's one of the reasons why we've been really successful in our AYP Plus group and also in my master class because everybody's very focused on a project and it keeps you grounded. It keeps you, you know, telling that same story, which is actually really important. Overcoming negativity. It goes with the territory, folks. I hate to tell you, I encounter negativity. I do. And, and you know, frankly, the bigger you get, the more negativity is gonna probably come your way. It doesn't go the other way. There's 20% out there who are gonna be negative. 20% of the population are that's what they do. Is the glass half empty? Always. 80% tend to be more on the positive side. Even if they criticize, they're really not criticizing, they're being giving you a critique so that you can improve. Criticism is just carping one, one random uh, covert, you know, covert hostility. It's not, it's not something that has a benefit at all. In fact, it pulls you down. Um, Self-criticism, don't do that. We're going to talk about how to get rid of that in a second. Lacking appreciation. Well, if you're not getting appreciated, you may not be putting your work out there. And that's probably where, where the flaw is. Because if you put your work out, you're going to get some appreciation back. It may not be as much as you want or from as many people as you want. And sometimes we want to be appreciated by one person. I remember when I was... A, a budding photographer, the person that meant the most to me in terms of pre appreciation was my mom. She was kind of like, you know, the ultimate, 
Like if she said, wow, Mark, I really like that photograph. Or she gave me a critique. You know, why did you do it that way? I kind of had to stop and listen to her. She was my biggest fan and my also the one I would really listen to in terms of uh, a critique. So uh, being more confident comes from just doing it, guys. You know, just doing it, putting your work out there, expressing yourself and then approaching strangers. We could we'll do a whole show on that sometime and I'll invite Dota and Sagai and we'll talk about it because he has a whole approach of opening yourself up to the, the place where you're photographing, letting people know you're not there as a threat. Anyway, that's that's a whole subject unto itself. Uh, you can also take a more stealth mode, which is what Cartier Versant did. He would photograph leave before anybody even knew he was there. There's different ways of doing this. Now there's a workable routine to overcome some of these barriers. And over the many decades I've been doing this stuff, and my own experience in interviewing and done, having done thousands of hours of interviews with not just photographers, but really creative people. I've come up with a couple of fairly easy to do remedies. I mean, these are just a few points I, I'm going to pick out of my book, but these are some really easy ones. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.